Hi church, it's so good to have you all here on another Sunday along with us. Let's just bow our heads and worship and invite the Holy Spirit into our midst right now. No one. 
continue worshiping him because he's worthy of all our worship he's worthy of all our praise
our God is worthy of our praise our God is worthy of our worship all our honor goes to him Amen. he's the worthy lamb who sacrificed himself so that we could have an everlasting relationship with the father Amen. thank you Jesus you're worthy
you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you, God, for your greatness in our lives. Every single day we taste and see that you are a good God. You are a good Father. Thank you, Jesus, for all your promises are yes and amen. Thank you, Jesus. We give the word into thy hands, Father. Lord, let your servant speak what you have put in his mouth. Let the Holy Spirit guide everything, Lord. Each and every step that we take, each and every minute of our lives, Lord, let it be guided by the Holy Spirit. Let it be led by the Spirit. Lord, every minute of our lives, let us be in constant communion with you, God. Thank you, Jesus, for your goodness and your mercy. We give you all glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning to you all. I believe you had a wonderful time in that worship. I believe uh, you are enjoying the presence of God. And uh, I just want us to just take a moment to just... Uh, bow our heads in the presence of the Father and just ask Him that He would speak to us. Holy Spirit, this morning we just come before You and we ask You that, Lord God, through this word that is spoken today, Lord, Father, that You will minister to each one of us, that, Lord, You will have Your way. We surrender this time into Your hand, Lord, and we say, come, Lord, have Your way with us. We love You, King Jesus. We bless You. Take charge over this meeting. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. I want you to turn your Bibles to the book of Romans chapter 5, verse 20 and 21. Romans chapter 5, verse 20, 21. That law came in so that the offense would increase. But where sin increased, grace increased all the more. Also says grace abounded all the more. Verse 21, so that as sin reigned in death, so also grace would reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I want you to just notice verse 21. It says two things. It says, sin reigned in death. Amen. Sin reigned in death. And then grace reigns. What is once a past tense is now a present tense. Grace reigns through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Hallelujah. Beloved, there is, there is something that we must, we must uh, understand today. I want to give you uh, an illustration or a simple example of the same. It is like, um, you know, uh, you are sitting at home and you are uh, with your family and suddenly uh, there is somebody who knocks on the door and you know in your innocence as you go and open the door you realize it's terrorists and they have just barged into your house and they have now taken over the house and you have no control over the house amen so they have taken over this place now no matter what you want to do you don't have a choice you cannot amen like like kidnappers or like terrorists or hijackers who take over and who just, uh, uh, you know, take into your space, suddenly you are now being held captive by an external power. Amen. And beloved, this is what God's word is teaching us here in Romans chapter 5, 21. He says, sin reigned in death. Sin is a power. Amen. Yes, we may not want this power. We may not want to live under the influence of this power. We may not want to, you know, do a lot of these things. But sin is a power. And it is a powerful power that you cannot overcome. Amen. So, sin, look at, look at the, the, the first example of sin coming into this earth. Amen. And so you have Adam and Eve who was told by Satan, Genesis uh, chapter 2, who was told, oh no, it's, uh, sorry, chapter 3, uh, did God really say this? You will be as God. And immediately, uh, you know, Adam and Eve, they sinned. 
they thought it was a choice but the moment they yielded to that sin amen sin came into this earth amen and so the same chapter one verse prior so romans chapter 5 verse 19 it says as through one man's disobedience many were made sinners amen underline one man who said one man adam through one man's disobedience many which is all mankind has been made sinners hallelujah and so adam who thought that it was a choice that he has do i eat of this fruit or do i not eat of this fruit is now held captive under this power what was a perfect relationship in his marriage is suddenly um, you know you see the first step of of uh, disharmony in that marriage when god says adam what did you do and he says it's the woman that you gave me the blame game has already begun hallelujah and so you see disharmony has stepped in disharmony has crept in because satan has already crept into that relationship and so adam uh, uh, gets involved in this first sin eve gets involved in this first sin they thought it is a choice but by the time their son is growing up amen they see things in their children that they never thought they would ever do amen they they see progression in the level of sin that they were seeing in their own lives you must remember adam and eve were full blown adults without sin they were innocent adults not babies they were innocent adults before the sin and now they are captive to this power amen and then the children that they have they are so disappointed because they thought this power only held them but even their children are captive to the same power and where adam thought that this power will will limit it at some degree or the other the son goes and does something even far beyond what he would have ever thought of doing killing his own brother killing someone death and as it goes more and more and more to today's time when we can't even imagine the kind of things that we are reading out in the newspaper so beloved i want you to understand sin is a power amen and sin reigns in death hallelujah the final destiny of sin is death amen so we we can try everything that we want to but just like sin death is not a choice death is an eventuality for each and every person death is an eventuality and that is what helps me to understand what is coming out of the newspapers today this this understanding of sin that sin progressively deteriorated mankind one after the other after the other generation after the after the next generation we realize that this is what is reflecting out of today's news this is what is reflecting out of many churches this is what is reflecting about out of many lifestyles this is what is reflecting out of cinema this is what is reflecting out of television we realize sin has held us captive hallelujah but just like sin is a power beloved there is another power amen and that is the good news of the gospel that there is another super power another power that has come and that has overtaken this sin overtaken we have no you see when you are hijacked and in that room if somebody called you on your phone and said are but you know you have your rights you have your free will you exercise your free will do you think you have the choice to express free, exercise your free will you don't the kidnapper will kill you the the terrorist will kill you so you have no choice you are held captive by a bigger power you don't want to commit sin but you still end up committing sin you don't want to end up watching stuff but you still end up watching stuff why because you don't have any power over this this external power that has held you captive and so the apostle paul in romans chapter 7 says woe is unto me i do the things that i don't want to do and i don't do the things that i want to do who shall help me who shall help me get out who shall help me and then he goes into chapter 8 verse 1 and he says by the grace of god the holy spirit 
Hallelujah, the mercy of God. So there is an external uh, second power that we must look at in verse 21. I hope you are, you are understanding and you are enjoying this. Amen. So verse 21, Romans chapter 5, he says, Just as sin reigned in death, so also grace reigns through righteousness in Christ Jesus. Are you with me? That is the Jesus life. The abundant life, the greater life that God is calling us to. Amen. That there is a life that is greater than this life that you and I are living. Amen. There is a life that God has gifted us, God has blessed us with, that is greater than where we are struggling. Struggling, beloved. And so there is a greater superpower that comes. A greater uh, 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 capacity that comes into you and to me. And this greater capacity helps us to defeat sin and to overcome sin and to live a life of victory. You don't need to, you know, uh, 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 steal your glances away when somebody says, oh, wow, you are such a man of God. Because you can be a man of God with the same inside and outside, beloved. You can live a lust-free life you can live an unadulterated life. You can live a life of victory in Christ Jesus. And that is the invitation that the gospel gives you. That is the invitation of the New Testament. The good news of the Bible, the gospel, is more than just forgiveness, beloved. It is not just about Jesus came and forgave my sins. Amen. It doesn't end there. You see, when the angel came and spoke to Jesus, uh, to Mary, he said, for you shall beget a son and he will be called Savior. Not forgiver. Savior. He is here to save you from the capacity of sin, from the power of sin. Oh, I'm so excited to share this with you. That there is, you know, we can look at Jesus and our understanding of Jesus can be limited to a forgiver, the one who forgives me of my sins. Or we can understand him in full capacity that this God is my savior. He can save me. He rescues me from the power of sin and darkness. Hallelujah. So he is my savior. Amen. And so Jesus, verse 19, once again, Romans chapter uh, 5. Verse 19, just go there one more time. It says, For as through one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so also through the obedience of one. Who's that one? Jesus Christ. Amen. Such a privilege we have to follow this Jesus. Such a celebration when, when, this, when this reality hits your spirit, beloved. I cannot begin to tell you how exciting it is to follow Jesus. Amen. That this Jesus was willing to come, suffer, die, live this sinless, perfect life. Why? So that you and I can follow and grab, lay hold of this sinless life, lay hold of this abundant, greater life that he has promised us. The grace that gives us the capacity to live in this life. Amen. And so it says that he came and he overcame so that many will be made righteous. What a privilege. Amen. Through one man, just like sin came through one Adam, now grace has come through one Jesus Christ. One man through whom we have all received victory as we yield and as we submit to this one man. Hallelujah. That is the good news of the gospel. Amen. Such a privilege for each one of us. Amen. So I want you to now turn your Bibles to the book of John chapter 1 verse 17. John chapter 1 verse 17. For the law was given through Moses. What to do, what not to do, how many times to take bath, how many times to celebrate the feast. Uh, don't look at another uh, uh, man's, don't, uh, don't uh, uh, steal, don't take somebody else's uh, uh, wife as your wife, don't do this, don't do that. The law kept telling you don't do, don't do, don't do, don't do. But you had no capacity to overcome the don't do's. 
Amen. You had no strength. So there are, there are, even today, there are New Testament believers who live in the Old Testament. Oh, don't do this. Oh, don't wear this. Oh, don't go there. Oh, don't live like this. But there is a New Testament, a, a, a abundant life that Jesus promises us. Hallelujah. And so John chapter 1 verse 17 says, For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth was realized through Jesus Christ, beloved. Hallelujah. Grace and truth came to us through Jesus Christ. Amen. Grace took human flesh and came, just like we say, word came. Grace took human flesh and came into this earth as Jesus Christ. Amen. Grace leads us to truth. Amen. No longer do I want to or do I have to live that life of hypocrisy. No longer do I have to look like Christian and, and uh, in my personal life be a mess. You see, in the Old Testament, they had all kinds of rules. And, and there were the Pharisees and the Sadducees who looked like they were all, you know, following God and following all the rules and the systems. But they were all messed up inside. Struggling. Had no control over their passions. Had no control over their lusts. Had no control over their tongue. Had no control over their flesh. Amen. We see people struggling in the same fashion even today. But there is a God who came and gave this, this, this freedom to break out of the power of sin in a power that he gave us, the power of grace. Hallelujah. Grace to overcome our sins. So grace came so that we don't have to live this hypocritical lifestyle. Grace came so that we can live a life that is full of sincerity. I've told you that Latin word, sine sera, amen, without wax, without being filled up with wax, a, a statue that is cracked up, we can now live a life that is full of reality, full of truth, full of honesty and integrity. Hallelujah. We can live that life, beloved. When we live to live a life, when we learn to live a life that is honest in the presence of God, we come before God and we can confess what we see and we can say, God, I'm sorry for this sin. See, what is the, what is the difference between the two thieves on the cross? One on the right who confessed and said, Lord, when you go to paradise, amen, God, will you, will you help me? Amen. And the other one, he thought he was perfect. Amen. He didn't judge himself. And so God's word teaches us, judge yourself. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 31. He says, now, if we judge ourselves, we do not have to come under the judgment. Amen. If we judge ourselves, we must be a people who judge ourselves. Understand that there is limitations in our lives. Understand that there are areas in our lives that we still haven't overcome. Understand that God, I still need victory in this area and this area and this area. I didn't even know this was sin. But now that I know, I need victory in this area of my life. And as he reveals more, you confess more. And as, he con as you confess more, you gain victory in more areas of your life. Grace of God. Grace of God. Hallelujah. When we learn to judge ourselves, beloved, when we learn to be a people, 1 Corinthians 11, 31, who judges ourselves, God does not have to judge us. I've shown you that picture on that last day of judgment when, when you know, there, are, there is a priest standing and there is somebody else who is, who is a saint who is standing in that judgment, judgment queue. Amen. And they all come and they stand before God and God says hell. God says hell to the next person. And then you come and you stand there. And then God says, heaven. And they ask, but why? I mean, we were priests. We were, you know, saints. Why is this man allowed when he was a businessman? Or why is this man allowed when he's just a photographer? Why do you know that he could have been lusting? He know that he could have been going through all kinds of struggle. Yeah, but he judged himself and he cried before me every night. He, he confessed his sins before me. Are you with me? So when you become that person who judges yourself, God's word gives us a promise, beloved. Romans chapter 8, verse 37. He says, you are more than conquerors. 
in Christ Jesus we will conquer everything that we cry and we confess before him everything that we that we come before him and say god i need a breakthrough in this area we can gain victory in that area beloved when we become that people who call upon him and say god i want to and i am i'm surrendering myself i need you to help me the grace of god amen so turn with me to hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 listen to me grace is necessary to live this life it is not sinless perfection it is a perfection that comes because you confess it is a perfection that you receive because of the grace of god beloved amen it is a life where you confess and you live at peace with god amen it is listen so grace is not unmerited favor grace of god Amen. Do you, let me let me explain this to you a little more. Hebrews chapter four verse sixteen says, "Let us approach God's throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our times of need." Grace was poured out on the day of Pentecost as Holy Spirit. Grace. You see, the Holy Spirit was called the Helper in John chapter fourteen. John chapter 14 I think verse 26 he says but the helper will come the holy spirit amen and here you see he's being called as grace to help us the helper he will come to help us what is the difference between mercy and grace see many of us think mercy and grace is one word and we we think it is the same thing no mercy is an old testament word There was a lot of mercy in the Old Testament word. Otherwise, they would have all been killed, slashed to death by God. Lightning, thunder, whatever, they would have been finished. But the mercy of God kept them. The mercy of God kept you. The mercy of God is what helped you in your past sins. You need the forgiveness of God. That is mercy. you plead mercy before a judge. I made that mistake. I I I jumped that signal. I need mercy. Hallelujah. I I I went and I heard that person forgive me. I need mercy. I heard that person physically. I need mercy. Forgive me. The judge forgives you. Are you with me? So you need mercy. Hallelujah. But there is also grace. Grace is not found in the Old Testament. Grace came with Jesus Christ, beloved. So wherever you read I was I was just going on the internet and I was just reading and the number of blogs the number of sermons that you will hear about about grace in the old testament there is no grace in the old testament grace came with Jesus Christ hallelujah grace came with Jesus Christ so we 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 understand that mercy is from is an old testament word what is grace grace is the the ability of the holy spirit to stop you from sinning so i'll give you a, a, an illustration you're standing on the top of a a a, a three feet three floor building and you jump amen the ambulance that picks you up with your broken leg is what mercy is amen but while you're jumping if there are four people who come with a net and hold you from flo- from falling on that floor and helps you from breaking your leg amen that is what grace is beloved it's as simple as that to understand grace keeps you from falling grace keeps you from sinning grace keeps you so as you keep asking god god i need grace i need grace i need grace i'm in the midst of temptation i'm in the midst of things that i cannot overcome i need grace god will grant us grace Hallelujah one step at a time you will conquer the giants in your life one step at a time you will claim your promised land which is a life of victory overcoming sin beloved the greatest promise in the new testament for you and for me is not that you will have an aeroplane is not that you will have the next lamborghini the greatest promise the greatest blessing in the new covenant is that you and i will live a life of victory 
Our marriages don't have to be messed up. Our children don't have to be messed up. Our personal lives don't have to be messed up. We don't have to keep looking if somebody is coming and keep looking at the internet. No, 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 no. We can live that life of victory. We can live a life where the grace of God will lift us up. So look at 4.15. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15. One verse up. He says, For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who was tempted in all things, just as we are, and yet without sin. Now this may sound very blasphemous to the religious minded people, but do you think Jesus was tempted? Yes, Jesus was tempted. Not just those three temptations that you see in the Bible. No, no, no. Jesus was tempted in all things. That's what God's word says. He has been tempted in all things. So if you are being tempted today, whether it is a girl or whether it is, it is, it is some internet stuff or whether it is some uh, handsome guy that uh, you are after or that job or that, you know, a greater promotion. I don't know what is your temptation. I don't know what it is, but whatever is your temptation, Jesus was tempted, beloved. There were pretty girls in Bethlehem. There were greater jobs that Jesus could have done. He could have cheated as a carpenter. But he chose to stick with God. Beloved. Hallelujah. So there is, there is a temptation that Jesus faced. And he overcame it all. And there is an invitation that he gives us today. That you can live that grace, that life of grace, if you will only but ask. As a baby, do you think Jesus needed grace? Amen, he did. Amen. And so, let me show you something that will rock your boat. Luke chapter 2, verse 39 and 40. Jesus lived under grace from his birth to his death. Don't ever, ever, ever imagine that there is anything else to this. He was under grace and therefore he was sinless. Amen. So look at this. Luke chapter 2 verse 39 to 40. So when he, when they had performed all things according to the law, they returned to Galilee, to their own city, Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong in spirit and filled with wisdom. And the grace of God was upon him. Why? Because he was sinless. The grace of God was upon him. The day you accept Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, you are sinless. So the grace of God is upon you, beloved. Now it is upon you how much you call upon that grace. Now it is upon you how much you seek that grace from God. So the grace of God was upon him. And so what happens? Romans 6, 14, 14. Sin will not have dominion over you. For you are not under grace, but you are under law. I mean, sorry, for you are not under law, but you are under grace. Hallelujah. Sin shall not have dominion over you. Why? Because you are under grace. Jesus was under grace from the time he was born. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9. For we do not see him who was made for a little while lower than the angels, namely Jesus. Because of his suffering, death crowned with glory and honor, so that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. Jesus, even in his death, was under the grace of God. He, he lived under grace from birth to death, and that is the invitation, beloved, that you and I have, that we will live under the grace of God, Every morning as we wake up, we will call upon the grace of God, the Holy Spirit. God, I need your grace. You know, I think it was Charles Spurgeon who once said, I have so much work to finish today that I will need to wake up two hours early to sit in his presence. You know what? Because he needs that much more time in the presence, seeking the grace of God so that he can go through the chores of the day. Hallelujah. That is the life, beloved, we are called to live. Therefore, because we know this Jesus was tempted, because we know he lived under grace from birth to death, the invitation comes to us in 416. He says, let us boldly come to the throne of grace where he is seated. Amen? Where we can find both mercy and grace. Hallelujah. Mercy for our past sins and grace for, for overcoming every temptation, overcoming every sin that may come our way. Hallelujah. I'm going to close with just this one more scripture. First Peter 
5:12 says through Silvanus our faithful brother for so I regard him I have written to you briefly exhorting and testifying that this is the true grace of God stand firm in it beloved there is a true grace and there is a false grace there is a real Jesus Christ and there is another jesus christ that the bible speaks of there is tongues that is real tongues and there is counterfeit tongues anything that is of value you will find counterfeits made by the enemy why so that you will get confused hallelujah so that you will follow the false one and be led astray so there is grace that god is giving us and we must learn to live under this grace grace is not a license for sin grace is not a permit for us to us to commit sin you know you 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 go on the net you read you study and you hear all this oh we know god will forgive you we know that you know uh, this is happening so what but you will still be saved no listen beloved as tabernacle of prayer as 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 a body of christ in andheri i want to tell you and warn you that there is a false grace that is preached out there but that is not what god has called us to jude chapter 1 verse 3 and 4 beloved while i was making every effort to write to you about our common salvation in christ jesus i felt the necessity to write to you appealing to you that you will contend earnestly for the faith that was once for all handed down to the saints for certain people look at this for certain people have crept in who creeps in the serpent for certain people have crept in unnoticed the thief who comes in unnoticed the thief those who were long before hand marked out for this condemnation ungodly people who turn the grace of god into licentious indecent behavior they keep committing those sins and saying but god will forgive me god will forgive me god will forgive me i am going with this girl but god will forgive me i messed up my marriage but god will forgive me listen beloved here is what god is telling us contend earnestly for the faith god's word is telling us we need to live by faith contending to walk under the grace of god in righteousness not making sin a habit not making this unrighteous lifestyle a lifestyle for us to live in amen because god is not going to keep forgiving you keep forgiving you keep forgiving you if this is the kind of life that you want to live it is a choice that you will make hallelujah so beloved jude chapter 1 the last time i mean the last verse that i want to read for the day was 5 he says now i want to remind you though you know everything once and for all that the lord after saving a people out of the land of egypt subsequently destroyed can you just underline subsequently destroyed those who did not believe let me just explain this to you this is the old testament picture of the people who crossed the red sea and yet they all perished amen in the desert why because they did not believe god and here's what god is teaching us that we can all cross our red sea which is trusting god and accepting the waters of baptism amen but there is a faith that god is expecting out of us that we will then this this is like a gate that i have crossed and now i will contend and i will walk in this faith amen i will contend for the faith i will not say i am going to live like the pig in the gutter I will not say oh but I always keep struggling in this area so I'm just going to live in this in this sin. No no no, I will fight. I will look for victory in every area of my life. Hallelujah. When I live that life beloved, God will bless me and take me forward. If I give in and if I say oh but this is my life, say subsequently destroyed those who did not believe. God has promised us a life of victory. God has said you are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. Revelation chapter 3 verse 21 says to him who overcomes i will give him the right to sit on the throne hallelujah we are called to be conquerors we are called to be living a victorious life don't follow the 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 those christians who are falling in sin again and again and again and saying oh but i can't do anything about it 
Listen, our benchmark is not a human being. Our benchmark is the human life that Jesus Christ lived. And that is what Jesus is calling us to. Amen. That we will learn to live this grace of God. That Jesus needed grace and I will need this grace. And so I will call upon God and say, God, I need your grace to live this victorious life. Day in, day out. Hallelujah. Let's bow our heads and let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for teaching me about the grace of God. Thank you, Lord God, for the privilege to serve you. Holy Spirit, have your way in the lives of each and every one of us that is struggling with habitual sins, secret sins, things that they are not even uh, uh, talking to anybody about, things that they are embarrassed about. I pray today, Lord God, they will learn to reach out and grab the, the grace of God that is available in Christ Jesus. Holy Spirit, have your way in the lives of every brother and sister in this church. I bless you today in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. May the Lord bless you all. And uh, just a quick announcement. We are not meeting this evening, but we start again tomorrow, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Wednesday will be our last day of fasting prayer. Please do not miss any of the sessions. We are having an amazing time. Uh, for those of you who have not participated in the fasting prayer, um, even if you would like to join us only for the prayer time, please do join in. It will be a privilege to have you with us. God bless you all.